Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. No one knows exactly what Thomas Mantell was chasing the day his P-51 fighter plane crashed in Franklin, Kentucky. For nearly 50 years, his family has searched for the truth, and Sightings has tried to help. First, by uncovering wreckage from Mantell's plane, and now by introducing his children to the man who heard Tommy's very last words. Carla Wall reports. On D-Day, June 6, 1944, Captain Thomas Mantell, Jr. proved just what kind of a pilot he was. He received the Silver Star and Flying Cross for heroism and extraordinary achievement in flight after he successfully towed a spy glider across enemy lines. After the war, he opened up his own flight school and served in the Kentucky Air National Guard. He was a devoted husband, a loving father, and the first confirmed casualty of a military UFO confrontation. The identity of that UFO has never been revealed, and the family that Tommy Mantell left behind still have nagging questions that prolong their grief. The Air Force has been absolutely no help at all. They have told us absolutely nothing. They sent nobody out to talk to my mother when this happened. It may have been, been 48 years ago, you know, but not knowing still hurts. The day Tommy died, January 7th, 1948, the air traffic controller at Godman Field was Quentin Blackwell, the man who heard Captain Mantell's last words. Now, after 48 years, Tommy's sister Betty and his two sons, Terry and Thomas III, are going to meet Quentin Blackwell for the first time. It's been almost 50 years um, since your father was killed. What are you hoping that Quentin Blackwell will tell you? Just to hear the last, uh, what he said in his last words, since he was the last person to talk to, to my dad. What I hope Mr. Blackwell will clear up in my mind is if Mr. Blackwell happened to see the object that he was pursuing or if he could shed any light on what it was all along due to the cover-up i felt like either they knew what it was and didn't want to tell us or they didn't know what it was and they didn't want the world to know and i would kind of like to know which of those things maybe it was blackwell has never spoken publicly about the incident but nearly 50 years later he's still troubled by his memories it was his son jackie who convinced blackwell to break the air force imposed gag order after seeing the mantels on sightings to me it was a family's appeal they asked for anybody that had any information surrounding this incident if they could talk to the families and to me that was uh that was enough, I, you know, and, and I just had to talk to my dad and say, look, you want to. And uh, dad says, yeah, I'll talk to the family. On January 7th, 1948, Mantell was part of a team ferrying P-51 fighters from Georgia to his home base in Kentucky. Near Godman Field, Fort Knox, the tower asked the team to investigate reports of a strange, unidentified flying object. The planes were not equipped for high altitude, and all but Tommy turned back at 25,000 feet. Tommy pursued the UFO and described a large metallic object. At 33,000 feet, his plane heeled over and came down in a spin. It crashed and burned in a Kentucky field. The Air Force said Tommy blacked out from lack of oxygen while mistakenly chasing an experimental balloon. But in Tulsa, at Quentin Blackwell's home, the Mantells heard a much different story from a key eyewitness. I got to the tower and I looked out there and there was a saucer. So I called the base operations officer from downstairs, a major, and he came up. He said, you got me in trouble now. I've got to call the base commander. So he called over Fort Knox and had some of the generals come over. During our conversation, Blackwell confirmed many of the family's suspicions and also provided new information about the real reason why the other P-51s decided to turn back. Abruptly, he said, Godman Tower, my two wing men are coming in. We want hot guns, and we want them now. Hot guns is Air Force slang for loading live ammunition into aircraft artillery. A National Guard wing commander like Mantell could only order weapons to be loaded when there's a verifiable threat 
and with permission from his superiors. So if Mantell instructed his wingman to load his guns, then someone else had to have seen the threat also. How did he describe the object? He said it was about 200 feet across, probably 70, 75 feet thick. It has observation windows from the top section around. He moved around it again, and he said it's uh, metallic, dull aluminum color. And he said, well, now it's trying to move away. I'm going to close in for a better look. And that's the last thing he ever said. The Air Force speculated that Mantell was suffering hallucinations caused by anoxia, the medical term for lack of oxygen. Was Captain Mantell coherent when he was talking to you? In my opinion, he had control right on through. I have worked people with anoxia, and in my opinion, he wasn't suffering. He was in full command of his facility. Perhaps the most important information Blackwell revealed were the names and ranks of other eyewitnesses in the tower. Oh, mercy. There were about three generals, Colonel Karen Coffey, the base commander, Colonel Hicks, and the operations officer. It was jam. When they said he was down, everybody abruptly left. Because the red tape gets awful. They didn't want to write all the reports. And didn't want to say they'd seen a saucer. Didn't want to say they hadn't seen a saucer. He was definitely chasing something that he felt was of a national... Well, I think it more or less makes him a hero. Quentin Blackwell's revelations were a double-edged sword for the family who had traveled so far to meet him. He confirmed their worst fears, that the Air Force knew that Tommy was after more than a balloon and still chose to remain silent. But Blackwell also spoke out about Mantell's heroism, something his family had always known in their hearts. Thomas Mantell is one of the most famous names in the history of ufology. But his family hopes that people will remember Tommy not just because he chased a UFO, but because he laid his life on the line to protect America from whatever he saw up there.